Once again, I want to take this opportunity to appreciate our Bishop, Dr. Jimmy Kimani, for giving us room to minister with him on this altar. I know there are churches I've visited where the only person who speaks in those services are the, the senior pastors only. And so for us, we take it a great, great privilege to be given an opportunity to once in a while stand on this podium to share God's word. I believe that God has something in store this morning. The Lord has a word for us. And just to start it off, I want you to imagine you have a friend or you have a relative. And anytime you meet, whether it's at home, whether you've gone out, maybe it's a spouse and you've taken her or him out, and the moment you meet to sit, what comes out of him or her is a situation of nagging, complaints, criticism, and anything that looks negative. When you have such a friend, believe me or not, your friendship for a, will be for a season. But most people will deter and say, hey, if this is the kind of talk that you'd always want us to have, give me space. Why? Because people don't like uh, people who are, uh, who wants to, they, they don't want to be associated with people who are always critical. Sometimes you could be critical for a good reason, but when it is so continuous, it puts a wall in fellowship. And I want to use that illustration with the fact that God, our Father, Love are people who are full of praise, are people who are grateful, are people who are thankful for every small and big issues in their life. Would you turn with me to the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 55 verses 19. The Bible says, God shall hear and afflict them, even he that bideth of old. That is, I wish you give me King James Version. Because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. Uh, give me King, King James, uh, New King James Version. Hallelujah. Alright, what I wanted to share is this, that there is nothing pleasing to God than always carrying a grateful heart. Okay? God will hear and afflict them, even he who abides from of old, because they do not change. They do not change. Therefore, they do not continue. They do not fear God. You know, the fear of God has something to do with honor and worship to God. It has something to do with our lifestyle. And you know what? The moment we learn to give God preeminence, to put God where he belongs, that's the time when God comes down. The Bible says he dwells in the praises of his people. Many times we go before the Lord and we have this list of things that we want God. God to do. It's things to do, but we hand it over. Lord, we want you to do this. But at the end of the list, there is very little that is attached to thanksgiving to a sign of a grateful heart. Give us Psalms 119 verse 64. The earth, O oh Lord, is full of your mercy. Teach me your statutes. Continue. Verse uh, Thou hast dealt with me with thy. Continue. 
with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. You know what? I want to remind us that our God is looking for a people who are full of gratitude. And you know, thanksgiving is the only way, is the only thing that opens room for God to favor you. I want us to remind ourselves of the story of David of old. After the victory that every time he went and he was fighting a battle, every time he would go before the Lord, he would go with the dancing and praising. Many times we sing songs how David danced before the Lord and the wife, the wives, or the, one of the wives was not very happy with that. And maybe a number of people criticized him. But he knew what was, he was doing. Because when you look deeper, you'll realize that David became a testimony in the eyes of God. The Bible says that David became a man after God's own heart. So what am I saying as we start in this fellowship this morning? Thanksgiving is the only way we show our love unto him. And when we learn to praise him from deep within our hearts, when we praise him in the spirit, he makes sure that his favor follows us. His presence abides with us. My prayer this morning as we share this word is that you may walk in the unspoken favor of the Lord even as you practice the essence of worship and praise to his name. When you discover that God stands on your side because you choose to honor him in praise, then there is nothing that stands against you. The Bible says in Romans 8, 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? God would love your company, but he also enjoys the company of praisers. He enjoys the company of people who are deep in worship to his name. I want to remind us that you cannot praise and worship him in spirit, and you miss him. Amen? At the same time, you can pray and have quality time of prayer, but you still live a life of an answered prayer. I know we've been in a 24 hours chain of prayer, and people have been praying, people have been fasting, and sometimes you, you come to a stop and ask yourself, how come? I've prayed for this and that and that and there is no answer. And maybe God is looking at you and says, oh my, if only you could learn to praise me. If only you could, you could learn to worship me. Things will be different. I want to ask ourselves this wonderful question. From the book of 1 Samuel chapter 13. Um, I wish you would be given that one. 1 Samuel chapter 13 verses 14. The Bible says, um, it's a question that I want to ask. Why do you think God calls David a man after my own heart? The Bible says, but now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be a commander over his people because you have not kept what the, uh, the Lord commanded you. Of course, the background story, if you could remember, is that Samuel, who by then was the king, was given instruction. No, sorry, Saul, who was the king by then, was given instruction by Samuel. And he was told, wait for me. And till I come before we, 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 we do an altar, we burn incense before the Lord. But the king was impatient at one point after waiting and he felt, I can do it after all. I can do it. 
And of course, there was a series of lack of respect for God and lack of respect for, uh, for the prophet that was taking place in the life of Saul until it reached a time when God decided, mm -mm, I don't want you to continue being the king in Israel. And that's when God finds David. And I'm asking this wonderful question. Why did God call David a man after his own heart? And maybe that's the same question God would want to ask us today, this morning. When God looks at us and is looking at you, can he say, Njoki, you are a woman after my own heart. Kaunda, you are a man after my own heart. Can God testify of you? I want to give a few reasons why God calls David after his own heart. And behind some of these reasons is because David knew the secret of worshiping God. He knew the secret of honoring God. Number one, he sought to inquire from God to lead, uh, to lead him for every move he would make in life. Even in his leadership, the only time he did not inquire from the Lord, he landed into trouble. And that reminds me of the story of Beersheba. He sends the armies to go and did not find time to inquire from the Lord whether he should go or remain in the house. And you know the end of the story. Lesson we can pick up from there. If you have to be a people after God's own heart, there is a need for us to always 100% lay dependence on God our Father. When we learn to depend on him totally, that for every move we make, we allow him to lead the way. Then that's the beginning of making God our best of best friend. Number two, why David was a man after God's heart. David was hungry for God. David was hungry for God. Are you thirsty? Are you hungry for God? If in this fellowship, in this church, if we were to be this kind of a person that we are describing here as David, you will come for our Sunday, our Monday prayer meeting, and you see people who are thirsty and hungry for God, crying and waiting on God. Amen. Number three, David was a man of God's heart because he sought God. Alim tafuta mungu. The Bible says, seek me while you can find me. Because there is a time when we'll need to seek him and we'll not find him. How many times, how many often, how often time do we find time to seek after God's heart? How often do we seek after him? Number four, David had a passion for spiritual things. He tried to please God even despite all his failures. Of course, he was human. In many places, he missed, he missed the point and even sinned. But inside that, deep inside, he had a passion for spiritual things. And that brings me to this question. Are we passionate for God? Have, can we say that we have sought him until we are satisfied with him? Because the moment you reach a place where you are saying that you are satisfied with God, that's the beginning of our downfall. And as long as we are still living on planet Earth, we're living down here, there is one attitude that we have to carry continuously. And that is an attitude of being thirsty and hungry for God. Because when we are thirsty and hungry for God, we'll continue to seek to please him. We'll seek to love him. We'll seek to honor him. We'll seek after him. Our life can never, ever remain the same. Praise be to God. Again, you'll find that David became a man after God's heart. Why? Why? Because his action proved 
He was a God chaser. He was a God chaser. I don't know what you are chasing in life. But in the process of chasing after God, he wrote 73 psalms of praise and worship. Most of his words were full of worship and praise. He was full of worship and praise. And I'm reminded of this clip that I saw the other day of a Nigerian team that is acting and there, this man who is seated on a golden seat and plays the image of God. And we are seeing some upstairs angels going down and up and they are taking prayer to him. And one would stand before him and say, Master, so and so is asking that you may remember to give him a car. He's been waiting for you for a car. And this is the prayer request. Another person goes and is like, I've been waiting for you for a plot. Another person, I've been trusting you for children. Another person, I've been try, trusting you for my marriage to work through. But there is one person who the angels took the prayers and in this time, the, the prayer request was, Lord, I just want to praise you. You are amazing. I just want to sing a praise song, a worship song to you. And when he started singing, this person started singing where he was on earth, the Lord left his throne and he stood and started clapping his hands and saying, yes, this is what I was missing. Somebody said, a preacher once upon a time said, if there is one weakness you can look from God or you can find in God is he only loved to be worshipped and praised. When he misses that, he doesn't act. In the midst of our prayer request, incorporate a moment of just worshipping, quality time, worshipping and praising and honoring God because that could be the lead to your breakthrough of the things that you've been waiting and desiring God to do in your life. David was a man after God's heart because he was full of humility. He always broke before God. He always cried. He always said, God, I cannot do it without you. And we are learning it from him. We are learning from our, 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 our friend David. He was a man after God's heart. He was broken. Many times we go to, through the encounter season, we we, we find a, an opportunity to break down and cry before the Lord and repent and put our lives in order. But the moment we leave the encounter ground, we forget so easily. We open some old doors that were closed. And the art of humility finds its way out of our lives. And the moment when you are leaving us brethren in a fellowship, in a church, in a workplace, minus the spirit of humility... That's where the enemy sows a seed of discord. We lose lack of respect for one another because humility left out a long time ago. But how God desires that our life will be full of the humility and the spirit of God working through our life, breaking us and molding us and making us the kind of a people that God wants us to be. Bonaisu Asifiwe. David prays Praises to God with the dance until his clothes fell off. Why? Because he found a reason to worship the Lord. If you turn to the book of Deuteronomy, but before we go to the book of Deuteronomy, there's one or two more points that I want to bring out. When and what are we supposed to do to give thanks to the Lord? How do we carry a grateful heart to be a kind of a person who is after God's heart? Amen. Now, we should give thanks for his act. And when I'm talking about his act, remember the little small things that sometimes we easily forget. Like this morning, did you even thank God that you are breathing without a gas? cylinder next to you. Did you thank God that you are alive? 
these are small things, but they really matter a lot to God because it reflects how much we are honoring him and how much we appreciate who he is. Did you thank God that your family has been well and maybe nobody has been admitted in an hospital for this period during this season we are in? How often do we thank God for who he is? Well, when you learn to give thanks and when you learn to praise him for who he is, you'll find yourself singing the song, Oh Lord my God, when I was think of your wonder. When you look at God's creation around you, you have a reason to thank God. Many people who have gone outside Kenya, especially in Canada and some other part of the world, when they come back, they will tell you that, man, we have a beautiful country. Even the climatical condition is so conducive for you and me. Bonesu asifiwe. Until you go to a place whereby even walking one step out, you are almost freezing. Everything around you is drying and is almost cracking. You are, your ears are cracking because of that kind of weather. And that's the reason when we come back, we have a reason to thank God for creating us and allowing us to be in this land. I want to remind us that nothing grows better in our lives, in our hands, without an expression of gratitude before God. Let it be a lifestyle, a lifestyle full of gratitude because that's the beginning of getting God's approval to bless our lives. I want us to look very briefly the importance of carrying a grateful heart before God, the importance of carrying a grateful heart if you would give me the book of John, chapter 11. It's a long story, but I want us to summarize it between John, chapter 11, verse 41 to 43. Then they took away the stones from the place where the dead man was laying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of, of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Okay? Now, when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And you can remember the story of Lazarus. And you know, when you think about the story of Lazarus, the sisters and the brothers kept on saying, if only Jesus would come, our brother will not pass through this. And you know what? Thanksgiving, in this case, God, Jesus himself is giving us a very good example. He doesn't go before God commanding. He had authority to say things. But he goes in a very simple in simplicity. And he said, Lord, I thank you that you heard me. It's a prayer of faith. But inside it, there is also a heart full of gratitude, knowing that the whole heavens was backing him while he was still on earth. And I think that is the attitude we need to borrow from King Jesus. That if you only know the authority God has invested in you as a child of God, there are things you'll not be struggling with. You'll always go before the Lord so open and say, Lord, I thank you because you've already met the school fees of my children. Lord, I thank you because you care even in this situation of sickness. Find time and just find time to thank him and thank him and see the result of what God can do. He said, Father, thank you because I always, you always hear me. So, in this case, what brought uh, Lazarus back to life is just simple words of thanksgiving and then calling him to come out. And God, this morning, because of your worship, he wants to call you out of your situation of deadness. Your business is dying. The Lord wants to call it forth to life. 
Your children could have not been performing well in school. God wants to restore that because of a heart of gratefulness. You are struggling in your marriage maybe and God wants to call that one out of dead situation, bring it back to life. God is in the business of restoring and is looking for a grateful heart. Bona Jesus, if you will. I want to repeat those words again. God is in the business of reaching out to people with a grateful heart. Every day, today, tomorrow, look for something that you are so grateful deep within. You are so grateful before God. And he is here today to meet you and me, especially as we keep graduating from a school of ungratefulness to a school of gratefulness. Amen. When the Lord provides, how often do we worship? How often do we share his goodness? How often do we testify this, the Lord did this and that? I just want to glorify his name. Maybe the opportunity may not come on a pulpit like this, but in those small fellowship, how often do we take time to testify in our cell meetings of the Lord's doing? Because those are the moments when God gets excited. Mm -hmm. That one remembers that there's something I did for him or for her. Buona Yesu, as if you will. Listen to the words of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 7. Verses 7 to 10. For the Lord, your God, is bringing you into a good land. Okay? A land of brooks of water, of fountains and spring, that flows out of the valleys and hills. Mm -hmm. A land of wheat and barley, of wine, of vines, and fig trees, and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, mm -hmm. a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and out of those hills you can dig coppers. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given to you. Buona Yesu as if you put it. Let's leave it at verse 10. When you have eaten and you are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Look around you. There is a good land somewhere. When you see your kids, your children going to school and when everything has been said, despite the economical challenge, there is a good land that God has provided for education system for your children. There is a reason to thank God. When you've been in good health, that's a good reason to thank God. When he has provided, you don't have debts. There is no landlord who is holding a gun on your head. You've not paid your rent. There is a whole land around you that says God provided. You've eaten, you are full, and now you are blessing the name of the Lord. And you know what? God is exactly looking for that. He's looking for a people who just blesses his name. A certain man of God called Pastor Stephen Fortick once said this, and I quote, the Lord is bringing you into another level of gratitude. Get to know that your next level of being elevated is just one praise away. That moment when you just learn to praise him correctly, you are being elevated to another level of touching God. You know, God's gifts alone is not enough to make you happy. But God's gifting in you attached to a heart full of gratefulness makes a whole difference in someone's life. Your next level of gratitude that goes hand in hand with your attitude of thanksgiving and gratitude. Buona Yesu Asifiwe. Those are words from Stephen Fatik, a man of God who once preached somewhere. And I want us to remember that our next level is just a praise away. I rather am learning to change my prayer language. Spend little time asking for things to happen and spend more quality time praising him and worshiping and giving him the glory. In fact, a, 
I've been telling my wife we want to revive our praise and worship time with a, I have a little guitar and by the grace of God sometimes I can touch some strings and I feel I want to continue more on that when I pick that guitar I want to give the best to the Lord because I've learned the secret the secret is honoring and I'm lifting and raising another level of worship bonus was if you will let it, let it be known to us today that God's gift alone without character in, in you cannot bring joy. You could have a home well surrounded by trees, but still live in cold. And when I'm talking about in cold, you find yourself so unhappy over many things. You find yourself missing a blessing of relationship and provision simply because you do not know how to turn your gratefulness into thanksgiving, how to turn your concern into a place of gratefulness. God may bring a situation your way that will cause you to continuously finding yourself repeating the same, same class because you've not learned to worship and to praise him. You know what? God is very keen. When he realizes there is a weakness and he wants to work in need to change you, he might cause you to repeat the same class several times. It's time for us to graduate to another level and not to be called repeaters. Because once, in, once a student, you've been in class four and three years down the line, you've been told to repeat the same class. You almost give up even in that school. And I pray that God would lift us up to another level. Bonaisu asifiwe. If you do not learn to turn your blessing into praises to the Lord, take care that you will not allow he will not that you will not allow your blessing turn into pride. I want to repeat those words again. If you do not learn to turn your blessings into praises to the Lord God, take care that you do not allow your blessings turn into pride in your life. Because the moment you start, you stop giving thanks for every small items in your life, there is that attitude of pride that's growing pole pole. And you find yourself reaching a place, I did it, it was me. You puff yourself up and forget that if God would withdraw from your success, you'll be zero by nothing. And you know, as a result of that kind of situation, as a result of this, your life will never be full of joy. Why? Because your heart has found holes of ungratefulness. I pray that today our hearts will not be filled with holes of ungratefulness. Bona Yesu Asifiwe. When you read the scriptures that we've just read from the book of Deuteronomy, there are a few things that I want to remind us also. Number one, Moses makes a point to the children of Israel to realize that what they needed most, just like what we need in our lives today, is not the accumulation of wealth, accumulation of degrees and masters. And I, I don't want to degrade uh, the idea of going to school. I long to continue going to school. Circumstances may not allow me to pursue my other degree. But if by any chance God has given you an opportunity to go those classes upstairs to doctorate and to PhD, don't forget where God has taken you from. Amen? Because it's not the issue of accumulating wealth and the things that we've accomplished in life, but when you, you need to find yourself in the next level of appreciation, then you'll discover the importance of worshiping and praising God because that's what uh, brings us to a place of a heart that God is longing for. I want you to learn, and this is my prayer also, I want to learn, uh, I want to learn to appreciate people for what is done to me. And that's what I want you to also to do. Learn to appreciate people, whether they're in a small magnitude or in a big way, in whatever state that somebody has done something for you. Because when you do so, you will set a state of what uh, you will or may need in the future. 
the Lord puts records. This one is a grateful. In a time when you didn't expect, the Lord acts because he could see a trace of gratefulness throughout your life. As I bring this sharing to a close, because if you don't learn to be grateful for the little God has provided, then don't expect God to provide more. Why? Because he is also checking. Is it pride that is coming up or is it the worship of me, God, that is coming up? And so, remember the story of the ten lepers. Out of ten, there is only one who went back to the Lord and said, Lord, thank you. And because of that, the Bible records that he was made whole. Yani, his healing was more complete than the other nine. Because he learned the secret of going back to God. You and me, we must purpose to grow in our attitude as you we continue to receive those lovely gifts from God. As we learn, as we find ourselves counting the many blessings, naming them one by one, that's the beginning of us growing in an attitude of gratefulness. What makes someone whole is the practice of gratitude. This act is not just natural. It's something that is supposed to be continual. It's growing. I'm reminded of the story of the clip that we watched the other day concerning the children from Japan. I love what I saw, the training that they're being, they're being given. The kids in that society are being told to be grateful over small matters. You see them crossing the road, they stand at the other side. And it's like they bow down and say, she, she, thank you for stopping for me to cross the road. Ebu pita pa wakenya uone vili wanafanya. Wanafuka barabara, wendu nasaili kusimama, sio mimi. And it's like an attitude of arrogance. But that attitude we are seeing in grown up was not nurtured when they were young. And that's the secret we need to learn. Learning to teach our children to be grateful from a tender age. And seeing them grow in an attitude of gratitude. As they grow up, you'll see the result. The, the second flip of the, of, of the clip, you see grown-ups lining up. Wakienda kwa bank, hakuna mtu wana cross line. Wakienda kwa elevator, wanapanda zile ngazi zinapanda juu. Wautapata mtu wana ruka, chip, 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 wanataka kufika mbele. There is always some kind of loyalty, there's some kind of concern for one another. And that was something that was trained when they were young. My question is, what are we doing in our children? Remember this, that uh, some of those habits we find ourselves as adults, they are rooted from how our upbringing was. And if our upbringing was right, and we took our children through the right lessons and, 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 and values in our home, then we'll be having a better society. And you know, you know what? Those are the words that are, we are being reminded in Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he was of age, he will never depart from it. Train up a child. And this brings us to the close of our sharing this morning. What kind of thing are we doing to raise up a grateful generation? A people after God's heart. Father, Thank you for allowing us to learn and hear from you. I pray that, Lord, this word will find room in our hearts and you'll teach us to put it into practice as you transform our life and as you make us to be the kind of a people you want us to be, a people after your own heart, a people full of gratitude. We bless you and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you.